Feedback listeners, this is the Sounds Like MLM But OK podcast, the anti-MLM podcast that goes directly into your ear holes, where we talk about the predatory nature of multi-level marketing every week. I'm Sasha, and with me, as always, is my best friend, co-host, fantastic researcher, fantastic social media poster, fantastic dog rescuer, Katie. Katie, how are you doing? (laughs) I feel like I have to up the ante every week with just like how great you are. I feel so uh, honored. I feel validated right now. <laughs> you should. You should. And we remember we were talking all about validation yesterday. <laughs> we were. <laughs> when we were writing this episode, Katie said, uh, text me if you need anything. And I'm like, if I don't anyway, just see if you love. <laughs> I always tell people, like, I have not been the kind of person to have a ton of friends in the past, especially when it came to, you know, being in a group of people where it was just kind of like yeah "Yeah, like I'm friendly and stuff but I never found myself really getting close to anyone but ever since I started running the group I have just found myself collecting friends and especially with Ashley and Summer and a couple of the other people that are on the mod team like I've gotten really close with them and then you and I met like an hour before we did our first episode um, together. We, we talked for five <laughs> minutes before we did the episode together, and we were like, hey, and then we made some joke about antidepressants, and then we just yeah. <laughs> We talked about like what medications we were on, and then it was like, okay, let's do this. <laughs> let's do this. We got it. And, like, I and thought, here we are. <laughs> yeah, I, thought, I thought that that episode had a good dynamic for all of us. Like, I've been, yeah, I, it, it worked. It worked. <laughs> But yeah, it's been it's been quite an experience and it's been really great because I made some super awesome friends and oh, it's too. just been awesome. Actually, I did tell you I had a dream about uh, before I told Katie I was having nightmares last night. But before my nightmares, I had a dream. Uh, Jessica and I were all hanging out, but we had to go to a LuLaRoe party. I couldn't find what to wear. And I was just like trying on and taking off clothes and everything and then you guys were like well we're gonna we're gonna bounce this party but katie did buy some leggings and i was like no no <laughs> that wasn't my nightmare by the way it was stressful but not that, my that's not my nightmare, my nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> i'm really curious why we had to go to a LuLaRoe party though it was for research for the uh for the podcast <laughs> in some, in some for like, research way. i have no idea science reasons <laughs> and we also had to talk to a journalist huh yeah interesting Interesting. I am talking to a journalist tomorrow I know. Morning. I know. That's exciting. <laughs> and we did have the Vice article come out. Yes. There's a Vice article. Yes. You can find it on our page. I posted it yesterday. Uh, as soon as as soon as Carolyn emailed it to us, I posted it. And Elbow is is very prominently in it. And Botwatch. And Botwatch, right. Yeah, Botwatch mm-hmm. too. Elbow has been having a lot of problems with her Facebook pages recently. She's had her third page has been taken down by Facebook. It was taken down a few days ago. Well, in like literally like a week or two week span as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all three of them in a couple weeks span. It's absolutely bonkers. I mean, we had an issue for a while. Remember that Facebook said that our website was malicious? Yeah, yeah, we couldn't post anything from it was our Libsyn link. We couldn't post anything from Libsyn. We had to post our our episodes from like YouTube for a few days because for some reason they were like, "Mm, we don't trust your, we don't trust your links. I was like, all right, well. (laughs) It's like everybody, anyway, everybody uses Libsyn for for podcasting if they're indie like we are. So it was very curious. Well, I have some news. I have some news uh, about myself. So, you know, Katie uh, adopted the stray dog that showed up on her doorstep named uh, um, Sunday because she mm-hmm. came on a Sunday. I've been having a very hard week, well, a very hard like month, but you know, like last week was especially difficult for me. And I had a little cat show up on my doorstep. And I just assumed she was like one of the neighborhood cats. You know, um, she showed up on Saturday. So I brought her in for a couple hours. It was in the middle of the night. I was up late, just kind of, you know, milling around on my computer as you do. <laughs> and uh, so she came and hung out. She ate. You know, I gave her some wet food. She had some water. Super cute. Super friendly. Just wanted to sit in my lap and purr like she wanted to be held like a baby. It was cute. So then I go and put her out. She's come back five times since then, multiple times a day, just to like hang out with me. So I'm like, I. she must have a home because she's so friendly. But I'm keeping my eye on her because she seems to have a dislike of men. And I'm wondering, we do have a a guy in the neighborhood who does abuse cats. Yeah. So I'm keeping my eye on her 
I, I'm, I'm just going to see where, where it goes from here. But in the meantime, I've been calling her Saturday. So <laughs> Katie and I have the, uh, the weekend pets. <laughs> The got Saturday pets. and Sunday. Saturday and Sunday, you know, the best days of the week. I'm really missing Sunday today because I had to take her back up to the shelter so that they could take her to get her to get spayed. So she's oh, gone all day today. Oh, oh goodness. I'm not picking her up for like another five hours. So it's weird. She's only been here like a month, but now it's weird not having her here. Absolutely. Yeah. And then she's going to be like all wonky when she gets home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, um, so we have a really, really fun, we have a really fun episode today because I, we were kind of thinking, <laughs> we were thinking over the weekend, like, oh, because we're going to do our Halloween episode next week. Mm -hmm. We're recording it this week because it's going to be video and I need time to do video editing and stuff. But we were like, well, what should we talk about? And uh, we still want to do an episode on the history of MLMs, but Avon kind of came up and then I got yeah. like, really yeah. fired in the conversation about Avon. I was just like, ah, Avon, <laughs> like, I don't, I don't understand why everybody likes it. Why does everybody like Avon? Like, what is it about Avon? I went to the anti MLM subreddit and people were like, oh, I still buy from Avon. It's like, why are you here? <laughs> why are you here? Yeah. And it happens all of the the time in the group there's certain companies that people are like oh I, I i know that they're an mlm and i know they're bad but you know it's like nostalgic for them and they still will buy products like with avon it's skin so soft skin so soft and, and we, then like tupperware you know stuff like that here's you know a look into our creative process for you guys we have tons of episodes that we want to do like we talked about a couple of episodes ago we talked about how there's so much content and so much stuff that we want to talk about well when we were recording our last episode entitled which sasha you were amazing at <laughs> titling <laughs> episodes every time i'm just like this is fantastic it's titled they've got the pyramid schemes but we've got the guillotines and we got started talking about early mlms because a lot of people think that Avon was the first MLM or Amway. Um, so we got started talking about Wachters, which was actually the first MLM. And so, yeah, like Sasha said, we were we were working on writing an episode about the history of MLMs and, you know, the first the first MLM companies. And Avon is one of the one of the first MLM companies. But yeah, we got into researching it a little bit and it turned into an Avon episode. <laughs> yeah. And, and there's a reason why people think that because Avon, well, 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 we'll get into it, but Avon has its roots all the way back to the 18th. So yeah. it is, yeah, I, I can, because I told Katie, I thought Avon was the first MLM. And then she told me, you know, she schooled me. She told me, you know, <laughs> what, what, what the actual gist of, of it was, you know, what, what the, the down low of it was, the low down, I should say, not the down low the lowdown. <laughs> and, um, um, well, okay, Katie, what is Avon? Because they just don't sell, and I didn't know this because you and I were like, oh, they, they're, they're selling all sorts of weird products in their catalog because we went through the catalog yeah. and they sell like, but apparently they've been selling other things besides cosmetics for decades. So yeah, what, what, what does I, Avon do? I, you know, a lot of people, like I said, a lot of people, Avon is nostalgic. Um, but I actually didn't really grow up around Avon or with Avon ladies around. The one person that I remember who did an MLM from my childhood, she sold Mary Kay. So also things that people are nostalgic with. Yes. So I didn't really know a whole lot about Avon, except, you know, I knew that they did makeup and skincare, you know, like Mary Kay. A couple of years ago, a cousin of mine was selling Avon and I saw her posting about it on her Instagram. And I was like, what is Avon doing? Because I saw her posting stuff from the catalog that was boots and Christmas tree ornaments and yeah. candles and other household decorations. And I was like, what is happening? I don't I don't understand this because to me, Maybe this is just me because being an esthetician, I can be kind of picky about skin related products. As you should be. And your skin always <laughs> looks fantastic. Uh, but for me, it was like, I wouldn't buy makeup or skincare from this company because it seems like they're trying to get their fingers in too many things. And the impression that I get from that is, you know, if they're trying to sell all this other stuff, how committed are they to making sure that their skincare products are really good products? I, I almost said top of the line, but you know they're not right. top of the line. They're trying to be, obviously, because most companies 
are trying to be top of the line. Well, and they have the but, name recognition, uh, I think, just as much as Mac yeah. has name recognition or Estee Lauder or any of the ones that I would consider something I would shell out money for. Yeah, but yeah, it kind of threw me off that they were selling all of these other random things. And and like I said, to me, I don't I don't trust a company's skincare or makeup products if they're also selling boots and Christmas tree ornaments. I mean, how good can their products be if they're trying to sell all of these other things? Yeah, I, I, I never I didn't even think about that, but I, I totally agree with you. But Avon has always sold if you go onto well, if you go onto certain websites that sell vintage things, you're going to find vintage perfume jars, vintage earrings, vintage children's toys, you know, from like the nineteen fifties. So they've definitely been selling other wares for a very, very long time. Yeah, yeah. It just seems like the the longer they go, the more they try to branch out and it's like are you really still focusing on the quality of your products? Because it seems like maybe you're not. Yeah, right. And what really got me curious about this episode, and Katie and I, this is one of the, the few episodes that Katie and I like have written together instead of one of us writing the episode and explaining it to the other person. Um, we wrote this episode together, so it's really special to me. Like this one is is like kind <laughs> of, you know, it has a lot of um a lot of heart for me. I was thinking about the Avon lady and what she means in kind of our culture. Uh, you know, I, I, all around the world, like the Avon lady has a certain classiness to her. She's got the Jackie O suit, you know, it's 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 pink or purple, like a pastel pink or a pastel purple with a little pillbox hat. Classy, 1960s, housewife, right. trying to bring in some extra income for the for the family and feeling like that she is independent and she has her own business. And we get to the meat of why that kind of connotation exists for Avon and how it's actually their downfall at this point, which Katie, I don't think you know, because this was something that I, I found out. I don't know how many of you out there have seen Edward Systems of yet, because- <laughs> I was just going to say, I think the most well-known Avon lady is Peg. Peg, yeah. I forget the actress. She's a very, very well-known actress, and she at least she was in the uh, in, in Edward Scissorhands was filmed. Um, so Edward Scissorhands, if you haven't seen it, it's kind of a surreal, satirical, modern fairy tale about being an outcast in suburbia, uh, American suburbia. And yeah. the Avon lady was the pinnacle of the little boxes made of ticky tacky culture. And so I want to play a really quick clip of uh, the Edward Scissorhands where uh, Peg is trying to go door to door to sell Avon. So let me bring that up real quick. Okay, hold on, Katie. <laughs> I should have had this ready to go, but I didn't. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, I ended up watching a bunch of Edward Scissorhands clips. Um, I know, I did too. I was like, I need to get off YouTube. I know what yeah. clip you're going to play, though. And I <laughs> I just love the conversation so much. And the last two sentences of the conversation are just so, I feel, quintessential. <laughs> like, <laughs> Oh, no. Yeah, they, they, they are so... <laughs> yeah, they, it's, it, like, it's, it's like so every... perfect. I know. It's like every what every person who hates MLMs wants to be able to say to the person trying to sell to them. I feel like most of us are too nice to actually be like this character because her name she's is so... Helen. I thought she said Hun at the end, but her name is Helen. Like Greg oh, and I okay. played it I over. She said it sounds a lot. I thought she said Hun. Uh, Greg listened to it a couple times, and he's like, "Oh no, she's definitely saying Helen." So um, here, here is the uh, the clip. Weren't you just here? No, not since last season. Today I've come to show you our exquisite new line of softer colors in shadows, blushes, and lipstick. Everything you need to accent and highlight your changing look. My changing look. That's good. <laughs> well, it goes without saying that I also have a complete selection of your old favorites, those tried and true products we've all come to depend on year in and year out. Come on, Peg. I never buy anything from you. You know that. I know. Bye. Bye, Helen. <laughs> come on peg i never buy anything from you you know that and it's like but but uh, i just wish that we could have that kind of relationship with our mlm reps where they're like yes i'm trying okay bye <laughs> like i still like, love peg you is just, <laughs> peg is just so she's so sweet and she's so good natured and so caring and even just her voice is so so delicate and sweet and i just love how how they i just love their relationship because Helen's just like, come on, Peg. 
come on. I know. Like, like, I know. <laughs> like I said, I wish that we could have that kind of relationships with our friends who sell MLM and we're like, okay, you know, Brenda, I, I, I'm not going, I'm not going to buy. You know, I never I'm not, buy. I'm not going to buy anything from you. Don't. I don't, know. Yeah. Okay, bye. <laughs> don't, keep see you next sliding, season. <laughs> don't keep sliding into my DMs. Like, I, 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 uh, I'll, I'll see you next season. <laughs> and it's just, this is in our uh, podcast chat with our advisory board. This is, this is the clip that everyone was like, that's kind of the pinnacle uh, Avon lady. And it's kind of interesting, too, because people have the misconception that Avon is somehow less predatory. And I think that that kind of feeds into the misconception if people are aware yeah. of Edward Scissorhands. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to be uh, right back after this little bumper music. Katie, are you ready to get into some uh, to some Avon? Talk about the history of Avon. Talk about why people love Avon. Oh, and part of the reason I wanted to do this episode is because there is an Avon Lady Barbie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it exists. Or it existed uh, several years ago. I think now you can get it on eBay for a pretty penny. But there is an Avon Lady Barbie. I think there's also a Mary Kay Barbie. But I think the Avon Barbie is more coveted. She might have a pillbox hat. I don't know. But I, too, have a vintage Barbie with a pill- pillbox hat. And it is not an Avon Barbie. <laughs> 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 okay, so we'll be we'll be right back. Just hang tight and we will get into the uh, the episode. Hello? Yo, Che, come quick. I'm on my way. Yo, cow, what's the deal? Why you clutching the steel? Now I'm scared for real. Yo, I'm scared as hell. Che, I'm scared as well. I was minding my business trying to eat a meal. But the save on lady wouldn't stop ringing the bell. Did you throw a fit? Nah, I let her ass in to see if she was a chick. She had quality products. All kinds of ointments, avocado face masks, and soy lotion. Yo, what's your point, kid? She flipped the script. Next thing I know, she ate my fish and chip. Who the four fish started talking that ish? How she hated White Castle and the Lonely Island. What? Did she really say she hated Cal and Che? Yes. Specifically. Oh. Not cool. So you slapped the gun away, now she's gonna pay the price? That's what happens when you try to eat my kind of Lisa Rice. Welcome back, listeners. We are back, and we're gonna talk a little bit about Avon history and about some commercials that some of you older listeners may remember, or some of you millennials just know about through uh, osmosis of pop culture. Like I said, with like Edward, Edward Scissorhands and everything like that. Like, we all know about Avon calling, I think. Right? Yeah. I think so. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so... Uh, Katie and I went to the Avon website. Mm-hmm. And, um, just being, okay. So Katie and I went to the Avon website. I remember when I was like, I really want to do this Avon episode. And I'll explain, like, why we found this, like, oh, this is, this is a little bit over the top. What is Avon, according to Avon.com? In 1886, 34 years before women in the U.S. earned the right to vote... Avon's founder, so basically the first Avon lady was an Avon gentleman. Avon's founder, David H. McConnell, helped give them the chance to earn an independent income. He didn't set out to create a beauty company. In fact, McConnell was a traveling book salesman who offered fragrances samples as an additional perk to his female, which katie and i hate just like the word female uh because it's like we're not specimens you know it, it's not like a dog you have to try to say it's just it's just used so negatively so Absolutely. frequently now that i cringe every time i hear it and i have to be like okay no that use was okay <laughs> yeah i mean it's fine if it's like oh this dog is female this dog is male but anyway yeah, it, it just has kind of a negative connotation. He offered an additional perk to his female customers with the perfume. Uh, he saw that these women were more <laughs> interested in the free perfume than the books. Shocker. Shocker. Jesus Who's Christ. not going to be more interested <laughs> in something for free than something they probably don't even want that they have to spend money on? Oh, and you know I that mean, they were like second-rate encyclopedias as well. He literally could have been giving away anything for free and they would have been more interested in that than the books just because it's free it's fucking free you know who doesn't like, like free shit <laughs> no 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 it's, it's seriously like when you go to a job fair and they have the free keychains of the, the <laughs> you know as promotional materials and you're like well yeah of course i'm gonna grab a keychain and then you do end up using the keychain because you give your, your friend a spare key or one thing or another or you're a landlord <laughs> and you need to, yeah no everybody loves free promotional material 
since women had a passion for his products and loved networking with other women, which is true. Like, I understand that, like, I, I've worked in a woman exclusive environment before. I do enjoy networking is the wrong word, but I do enjoy working with other women. Uh, McConnell was inspired to recruit them as sales representatives. From a small New York City office, McConnell himself mixed the company's first fragrances. So what does he know about perfume, Katie? Um, it seems like literally nothing. Yeah, I mean, like, it, yeah, I bet it, the first fragrances he mixed smelled like shit. <laughs> Yeah, because I'm like, I, I, I have a lot of fragrances myself. I just know that I would not be able to mix one. I know. They probably smelled like, they probably smelled like musty flowers. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like funeral <laughs> home. The, the funeral yes. home flowers. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. This became Avon's long history of empowering women around the globe. Now, if this was a company. I mean, it was Oh, wait, sh- shit. I was, I was, I was muted. Um, <laughs> don't you think that if. He was really a revolutionary that we would have heard about these th- this company in our women's history classes. It it does seem like if it was as empowering and revolutionary as they make it out to be, that it would be important enough that, yes, they would talk about it in in those kinds of classes. Yeah, women's suffrage and everything. So wh- what right. makes this kind of a little like... Oh, uh, like, uh, it's a little, it's a little condescending to women. 77 years before the wuss, the first woman traveled into space. So revolutionary. <laughs> uh, 76 years before the first woman took the reins of a Fortune 500 company. So empowering. <laughs> I am loving your commentary. Um, <laughs> 34 years before women in the U.S. had the right to vote. And 17 years before the first woman won the Nobel Prize, Avon off- shit first. <laughs> Avon offered women the opportunity to be this is this is great. Ugh. Offered the opportunity EOs of their own businesses and control their economic destiny. <laughs> Destinies. And then this is this is from David McConnell, who is the you know the official Avon before this it was quote, even called. This yeah. quote is. So you, re- you should read it. It's you so inspiring it. and not convoluted at all. <laughs> <laughs> you should read it. <laughs> if we stop and look over the past and then into the future, we can see that the possibilities are growing greater and greater every day, that we have scarcely begun to reach the proper results from the field we have before us. Wise words from a wise man. <laughs> Ma- you know, mansplaining. I mean, he's not mansplaining. Sorry, I'm gonna I mean, that out. It's dumb. But <laughs> it, those are those are certainly all words. Those are certainly all words, right? And Katie and I, we were like, okay, we're just gonna copy and paste from the website because if we <laughs> just tried to like sum it up for you guys, we would lose that cringe factor. It was, That's, yeah, we yeah. we couldn't. We sometimes we just have to read things directly from websites, and then it's not because we're lazy; it's because we just can't say it any better. <laughs> right, exactly. We can't say it any better, and we also, like I said, in certain situations, we want that cringe factor. So, yeah, yeah. And, and and from Avon.com, we wanted that cringe factor. You got to hear it right from the horse's mouth. A- absolutely, yeah. Um, Katie, do you kind of want to get more into this section because you're the one who put together? Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of just um, a brief overview of how Avon started and how they morphed will kind of get into their different campaigns, which which a couple of them they're really well known for, like we talked about the Avon lady earlier. Ding dong, Avon calling. Uh-huh, uh-huh. When he started this company, he started as a perfume company because, you know, women just fucking love perfume. Well, I do. Per- I, I mean, perfume. I, perfume I, is so much better than books because who need books when you can smell good? Uh, right. Well, I love both because I have Amazon now. <laughs> I have Amazon Prime, so I can, I can, I can, like, why not have both? Why not have both? But this was, you know, the eighteen somethings, the nineteen hundreds, I guess. No, it was the late eighteen hundreds. Anywho, eighteen eighty six. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, his very first recruit was a lady by the name of P. F. E. Alby, and you know, that's just kind of. That's just kind of something to know. When the company, when he initially started the company, it was not MLM. It wasn't multi-level. Which it was... is why people think that it's like, yes, yes, Avon. And it wasn't even called Avon at the California Perfume Company, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was just the exact definition of like direct selling, basically. Um, it was, I mean, I. <laughs> I I don't know how to describe it except that it was direct selling without the pyramid structure. It was door to door. Like women would go yeah. door to door and talk to exactly. other women, which exactly. I think yes, that is a very very cool structure for the 1880s. However, what Avon is doing right now is that they're comparing apples with oranges. They're saying, well, because, you know, women went door to door in the 1880s and were connecting with other women, it's obviously the same thing now and it's not. It's not. It's not at all. I MLMs and the way that they advertise and the way that they function has changed so much, but also so little. It almost feels like they're trying to hang on to an outdated system and they're trying to bring it up with the times. But the thing is that people are catching on. That's why we have this podcast. That's why we have all these anti MLM groups and we have the anti MLM movement because people are catching on to the MLM structure and how flawed it is. Even if it's only been with the last couple of years. But at that point, Avon was not an MLM company. It was just women no. talking to other women yes. like, hey, do you want to buy some perfume? Yeah. Uh huh. It was it was literally just direct sell. I mean, they would buy the they would buy the perfumes and the products wholesale, basically. Yeah. And resell them, which is, you know, is only different from MLMs now because they didn't like recruit people into their downlines. No, it's like <laughs> they when, would when recruit they were... other women, but they weren't in an upline downline structure. And if they, they did weren't recruit, in multi-level. if they did recruit another woman, it was like, wow, we really jive well together. Like she should definitely be on the team. It wasn't because they were going to get some kind of, yeah, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. So anyway, moving on. The GSA, the Direct Selling Association, was founded in 1910, and Avon was one of the early members of the GSA. During the Great Depression, Avon started running sale prices in their catalog. So that was kind of something that they they hadn't previously done. And they were like, oh, hey, people don't really have money. Maybe we should make our items less expensive. Yeah. Which yeah, and is And everybody logical. loves a sale. Like, I am more likely to buy something during a sale than I am when it's full price. Even if it's, oh, totally. even if it's an impulse buy. Like, it definitely totally. creates that. Yeah. Totally. So in 1935... They sponsored a radio program called Friends, and that launched their national advertising campaign because, you know, until then, it was really just catalogs that they were advertising in. But I have once to they ask, started sponsoring this, this radio show, show, they were on a break, in my opinion. <laughs> they were on a break. <laughs> then in 1936, they began their first ad campaign in Good Housekeeping. Um, in 1953, they started running TV commercials with the campaign that we all still know and reference all the time, which is Ding Dong, Avon Calling. So that that really is it's, – it's interesting to me that of all of the campaigns that they did, that is their first one and their most well-known. And I'll go ahead and play that right now. Avon Calling, take time out for beauty when Avon comes calling. Use Avon Cosmetics and you'll be enthralling for a pleasure-filled break in your daily routine. It's time to take time out for beauty. Avon Calling. So in 1914, Avon had moved into Canada, so they were already in the United States and in Canada. We're moving back a few decades, yeah. Yeah, but then in 1953... They started setting up divisions in Latin America and then in Europe in 1957. In the 60s is when they began advertising cosmetics, fragrances, and other popular product packaging like decanters for men's cologne and but peanuts. No, for- no men's cologne itself, just the decanters? Uh, like- you know, I, I couldn't say. Um, I they it, it just said fragrances, so I imagine that right. they were already that they were doing perfume and cologne. And then that's when they started advertising, you know, special containers for your cologne and also peanuts, cartoon characters on children's toiletries, which I've seen on Etsy that you can buy. Yeah. Then in the early 1970s, Avon ads started displaying the importance of the teen and African-American demographics which they hadn't previously really actively tried to reach. Now, remember that this would be the post-civil rights movement, the post-sexual revolution moment. The, the um, you know, the, those were very important demographics to reach. Just uh, women of color, they were part of the civil rights movement, and they were finally, it was starting to show that, yes, 
marketers could market to this women to, to these women without being shamed. And they should also be marketing to very young women like teens because they were part of the sexual revolution, part of the summer of love. Right. All that. Yeah. Right. In 1972, they started their Someone You Know Sells Avon campaign, which, you know, was an attempt to get people to I feel it was an attempt to make it really familiar, which which obviously is the goal of most campaigns, but to really make it personal. Absolutely. I would say. And at this point, okay, and I mentioned this later in the episode, that Katie and I are not sure when the especially Katie really, really researched this, that yeah. we are not sure when Avon became a MLM structure. We yeah. we don't know because we could not find that information anywhere. If any of you know, please email us. We, we, we would love to know because we could not find that information anywhere. Yeah, yeah. I did mean to mention that, but I, I forgot. So thank you for mentioning that. No, yeah, that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, we just are not sure when they switched over from direct sales to the MLM. So in 1976, they launched the You Never Looked So Good campaign. And then in 1983, they started targeting upscale, fashionable women with Avon Now, Avon Wow. Which, <laughs> I don't know. It and, just makes me laugh. And I also want to, me- kind of going back like a couple decades at this point, but I want to mention that there were very, very stars um, promoting Avon that they were, you know, that they were, they did celebrity promotions, like Jimmy Stewart is mm-hmm. one of them. I can't think of any of the others off the top of my head, but it did kind of put Avon's prominence on the map as being like a high end, like high fashion, what you were just saying, cosmetic. Right. Yeah. 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 So in in the 90s, they started focusing on their anti-aging line anew, which Sasha and I theorized about why they chose then to start focusing heavily on their anti-aging line. And our theory is that that was when the people that had grown up in, you know, the 50s and 70s, seeing the beginnings of Avon, the MLM, really starting to come forth the 90s is when they started, you know, being adults or, you know, older adults, seniors, where they would be the ideal target for an anti-aging cosmetic. Absolutely. You look back at, uh, like, what what Tom Brokaw ca- calls uh, the, the, the people who birthed the baby boomers the greatest generation. Uh, so, so these were people who grew up during the 1930s and then... Uh, were housewives post World War II in the 1950s. They remember Avon calling. They probably bought Avon products, which I want. I, I meant to m- mention this in the intro real quick, so I'm sorry to kind of uh, uh, deviate from that. But Avon did have a place when it was a direct sales company. We don't know if it was an MLM or not, but it was at least direct sales with a Avon woman going door to door, where there were not like major malls in every town. So when an Avon lady came door to door, this may have been your only place to get the makeup colors that you wanted. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We've talked about that in previous episodes before where we're like, well, yeah, Avon and Mary Kay like technically had a place in society at that time. Um, whether or not they were MLM structures at that time. So yeah, you get the the greatest generation. And then by the time that they're married and they've got children, they remember Avon calling. They probably purchased from the Avon lady because that was the, the best way that they could get all those colors that they wanted. So at this point, these women are older. They are going to be wanting uh, anti-aging creams, things like that, because... Now the the primary customer base is older and they already trust Avon and that is their primary brand. Yeah, that's exactly what's going to happen. Right. Yeah. So, okay. 1996 was just another Avon lady campaign, which seems seems kind of odd. That is odd because it's like, I am not just another lady. I am. <laughs> right. like, yeah, that is so different than like anything that we see because because every every other makeup campaign that we see it's like you are unique and we are even unique yeah i just realized (laughs) that unique is called unique because it's like yes you have makeup needs and we are going to cater to that oh my goodness just okay (laughs) did that just click in your brain (laughs) (laughs) no it seriously did it seriously did i yeah yeah it did okay so 1997 dare to change your mind about avon 1998, Claim Your Beauty. 2000 was Let's Talk. 
oh my god let's talk let's talk that is let's you talk know about avon whenever a parent or a a lover of yours a partner <laughs> we need to talk. comes in it's like we need to talk that is, <laughs> <laughs> that is like high anxiety <laughs> Uh, in 2001 avon launched their first retail brand called becoming and in 2003 they launched the mark brand which targeted 18 to 24 year olds and recruited 25,000 young sales reps to reflect the new face of avon Those would have been millennials at the time, the 18 to 24. I think that that's generally, I know that some of the mid-20s millennials like Katie is at 26, but that that would have been like women, generally the people who listen to the podcast, that would have been our age. Yeah, I mean, that's that's my sister's age. That would have been my sister's age range in 2003. Yeah, 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 yeah. Avon, (laughs) they began efforts to really reach what, as it says, ethnic women, so women of color, um, by quote, overhauling its brochure to reflect a diverse mix of Hispanic, Asian, and African Americans. Avon also actively recruited African American sales reps with advertising, which was something we talked about the other day, actually ended up being like really problematic the way that they were targeting women in this age range in the way that they were targeting women of color. Absolutely. It's kind of like how Herbalife will target immigrants. Mm-hmm. Because what 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 Herbalife will do is they say, oh well, you know, you're you're going to dominate the Spanish speaking market because we need Spanish speaking consultants and representatives, right? And they all come that, here, you know, it's part of the American dream. Yeah, exactly. And they they advertise Herbalife as being able to achieve the American dream. Absolutely, yeah. With that, you know, we're, we were talking about that we weren't sure when. Um, when Avon became just like women going door to door and giving other women cosmetics that they weren't able to buy in stores at that time to when, when did they become an MLM sales structure? And like I, like I said, Katie and I don't know. Um, it seems very, very ambiguous. However, it is noted on the Wikipedia article that they were one of the, like Katie said, they were one of the early members of the DSA after its foundation in 1910. However, you said, what was the name of the, uh, it's like watchers or something, but that's watchers. Else. Yeah. Okay, so that was the first MLM in the 1930s. Uh, so we don't know exactly when um, when uh, uh, um, Avon joined the DSA. However, we do know, uh, based on a holla to one of our friends, uh, PinkTruth.com, they mentioned that Avon had left the DSA in 2014. And mm-hmm. then, uh, let me read exactly what that says. Uh, why they they left? So September fourteen, or I'm sorry, September twenty fourteen. Uh, they left the DSA with a flourish. This article in Pink Truth, or Pink Truth says, um, September twelfth, twenty fourteen. Avon has made the decision. They say in their press release to withdraw from the U.S. Direct Selling Association, the DSA, based on our belief that in the U.S., the DSA is not advocating effectively for Avon and our representatives. We are committed to direct selling in the U.S. and markets around the world. Avon's number one promote, uh, Avon's number one priority is supporting our 6.5 million representatives worldwide. We succeed when they succeed. So everyone was like, oh, Well, does this mean that Avon is a better company than the rest of MLM markets out there, the rest of the MLM companies? Not necessarily, because Pink Truth suggests that Avon's decision suggested that the company was worried about pyramid scheme allegations, although they had never explicitly said that. Well, of course they wouldn't explicitly say that. No, no, no. no. Why would they? Like, that seems like a... um, Like, they don't want to advertise that. They don't want to bring attention to it. Absolutely not. Like, why would you? Um, so all that, all that happened in 2014. And then in 2017, they kind of, like I said, in like 2016, oh, 2016, excuse me, 2016. In 2016, as, as pinktruth.com mentions that, um, that they, they kind of quietly rejoined and Mm -hmm. nobody really promoted. They didn't really make huge mention of it. The only difference that you can see is, and this is shown on the article on Peak Truth as well, is a screenshot from July 20th, 2016 of the Avon Code of Ethics from their website. And it says, at Avon, we strive 
always to maintain the highest standards of integrity and ethical conduct consistent with our company values and in compliance with both the letter and spirit of all applicable laws and regulations. In keeping with this commitment, Avon strongly supports and is in compliance with the World Federation of Direct Selling Associations Code of Ethics. And then a screenshot from October 11th, 2016, the same page that says Avon is a proud member of the Direct Selling Association and strongly supports their code of ethics. They're not that proud of it because <laughs> they announced leaving but didn't announce coming back. They tried to distance themselves from it. And this is kind of what I was trying to talk about in our last episode where it was, like Katie said, uh, they have the pyramid schemes, but we've got the game. Um, so why does any of this matter that they're they're trying to get back into the DSA? As Pink Truth said, the DSA kind of pretends itself to be a a watchdog organization. But as we can kind of see from what we talked about in the previous episode, where they're putting out uh, HR thirty four oh nine gives more lax regulations to the FTC regarding what is a pyramid scheme and what isn't a pyramid scheme, they don't have their consumers' benefits at heart. They want to make money. So they act like they're this big, like, oh, we want to oversee everything. We want to make sure that everybody's getting, you know, th th that 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 none of our companies who are partners with us are going to be uh, pyramid schemes. But it seems like with the things that they do with with especially HR 3409, with that bill that they put out, they don't have consumers' best interests at heart. And when you've got a company who initially breaks away from the pyramid scheme structure, and, um, <laughs> you know, and then they, they, they go back to it, it's like, okay, so, so why did you break away after decades of being in the DSA? And why did you come back? What, after two years, what, what is going on there? Well, you know, I also wanted to point out that Pink Truth mentions that the next year, Avon just so happened to win an award from the DSA. Oh, yeah, I skipped over that. Yeah, marketing and Sales Campaign. The Marketing and Sales Campaign Award. Yes, yes. So Katie and I are obviously very critical of the DSA. Uh, for, for, for all the reasons I just mentioned, especially in the last episode, and now they're getting awards for being in the DSA. It's like, huh, yeah, okay, tell, tell me more, Avon, tell me more. Um, so that's, that, that's, yeah, that, that, that's one of the reasons, like one of the reasons that Avon makes me and Katie uh, uncomfortable, and we don't know like when it became a direct sales company from, um, from, um, from a, dis a direct sales company to a anti-MLM company. And so we, we see this in the group a lot. And like I said, we saw this on the anti-MLM subreddits. Oh, by the way, before I get into that, I just want to recommend that if you have Twitter, you should follow at Pink Truth. They are fantastic. They are the head of the, uh, they are the head of the, um, I'm sorry, Pink Victim on Twitter. You should follow Pink Victim on Twitter. They are the head of the Pink Truth website. Isn't that correct? I believe so. Yeah, I believe so as well. So follow Pink Victim. They are fantastic. We love them. So thank you, Pink Victim. Why do people think that Avon is so great when it's really just another MLM? Because I've seen it on the anti-MLM subreddit before where people are like, yeah, I know it's a it's an MLM, but I just don't see them as that predatory. And then also, I know Katie, Ashley, Summer, and the other the rest of the Modman team, they deal with this constantly. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that maybe people think it's not predatory because it's so old, because in their minds, it's like, well, my grandma sold Avon, and so I don't think that it's predatory. You know, she wouldn't have been involved in something that, that that was bad like these other companies. And then at the same time, you know, they've got these products that people are so nostalgic for, like Skin So Soft, that they've been using since they were a little kid because their grandma or their mom or somebody sold it and they always had it in the house. And, you know, they just absolutely love it. So it's... It's just a lot of not not realizing things, you know what I mean? Like, it's not realizing that, yes, this company is same as other MLMs. Yes, there are other products that are like the products that they sell. The first part of that is what I like to call the nostalgia filter, is everyone has memories, like, like Katie was saying, everyone has memories of Avon back in the day, 
I feel like everybody's grandmother was an Avon lady. And also, it's just, you go to Etsy, and you see all the old perfume decanters Avon used to sell in the 50s and 60s. You know, vintage right. perfume uh, decanters. They are super adorable. That level of Mad Men, 1950s, 1960s nostalgia. You know, you see Joan Holloway on Mad Men when she first becomes part of the ad team, essentially. Her first account, her biggest account, is Avon. People associate Avon with classy ladies, I think. Yeah. With the Avon lady. That's that's yeah. the familiarity of it, because the, you know, the Avon lady is so iconic that it can't be predatory. It can't be harmful. You know, it's it's the sweet old lady that sells makeup and perfume. Right. They had fantastic advertising, as we talked about earlier. We have that name recognition. Everybody has yeah. that name recognition that something like, say, Unique doesn't have. Yeah. Well, and that's, that's you know, a lot due to how long they've been around. It's a household oh, yeah. name. Like yeah, Tupperware. Yeah, absolutely. Mr. Yeah. <laughs> we, no. we should, yeah, we should do a Tupperware episode because that seems to be another one that people... And oh, anyway. definitely. Yeah. Also, what we see in the group a lot is... Skin so soft. Mm -hmm. uh, just love. Loving on that skin so soft. Everyone seems to have a boner for skin so soft. I was really curious as to why people seem to have this nostalgic love affair for skin so soft. And I think that one of the things is, especially I think in southern states, this was much more popular, or in the Midwest, uh, that, that people would use skin so soft as bug repellent. Yeah. Because it would certainly smell a whole lot nicer than uh, something with deet in it would. Well, I saw somebody talking about Skin So Soft the other day. I think it was in one of our group chats because, um, you know, like we were saying, we have people talking about Skin So Soft in the group all the time. And it's like, there's other products you could use. And so I messaged this group chat and I asked this one particular friend that always has something that she recommends. And I said, I was like, Rachel, what is it that you always tell people that they can use instead of Skin So Soft? And she goes, uh, literal bug spray. I was like, oh, okay. And then another friend was like, I don't understand why people like that. It smells so bad. But I don't think I've, I've never ever smelled actually, it. yeah, I don't think I've ever actually smelled it. I, for whatever reason, I've always imagined it smelling like fruit and baby powder, but I have no idea. So I know that Rachel, I think that when you were talking to Rachel, she said that she always links to the Consumer Report <laughs> article that I found yeah. too, as well. Yeah, um, Rachel's known about it a lot longer. This is, we, we've been talking about Rachel a lot on the show. Shout out to Rachel. Hey, girl. Hey, Hermes. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Consumer Reports says it did not perform well in their most recent insect repellent testing. And that result tracks with the last time that they tested the product's insect repellent abilities way back in 1993. This time around, the oil only provided about two hours of protection from deer ticks and two kinds of mosquitoes. The two kinds of mosquitoes aren't the ones that spread things like the Zika virus or the West Nile virus. <laughs> of which course. Are, yeah, naturally. Right. Right. It sort of reminds me of just today in the group, today as of when we were recording, or I think it was actually last night, someone posted a article a, or a, an advertisement about men using a certain blend of Young Living products to, was it attract the deer? I I don't know. I didn't see that. <laughs> yeah. And, and I, I ended up talking with a lovely commenter who is like, the only thing you're going to do is scare away all those animals. You may as well drench yourself in wolf piss. <laughs> <laughs> right on, sister. So yeah, skin so soft. According to Consumer Reports, which, you know, I've always trusted Consumer Reports. I think that they are really, really good. They say, while we know that many customers have turned to Skin So Soft bath oil, the product is actually not intended to repel mosquito, obviously, or sold for that purpose. But we know that probably people suggest it all the time for that pur purpose. You can imagine it is not approved by the EPA as a repellent. I mean, that's not what it's supposed to be, so... Oh, 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 I'm sorry, I need to read a little further. Avon told Consumer Reports. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. Now, moving on. <laughs> they also... I just, like, yeah. you know, I... Sorry, I just had to say this before we moved on. I get that people like to use it because, you know, maybe it doesn't smell as bad as actual bug repellents and i under i could i could see you know 20 years ago it being just as effective but 
it's it's there's just so many better products out there that are actually designed to be a bug repellent. I just don't understand. Like the report said, it only keeps away like three types of bugs and only for a couple of hours. I would rather use some random, you know, Off has this family care one that's not super sticky and doesn't smell terrible. And it does a good job of keeping like more than three kinds of bugs away from me. Or you know what you could do also if you don't want to wear a, a trunk ton of uh, bug repellent is get one of those bug lights, one of the yeah. bug lamps. Yeah. Especially now that that whole moth and lamp meme, I think it kind of ran its course. <laughs> it's probably you know? going to like come back into style. People are going to start buying bug zappers again. You know what I got a couple of years ago for our daughter because um, she had really sensitive skin um, at the time and I didn't want to spray bug spray all over her was one of those off fan type things that you hook onto your clothes and it basically just fans out the okay. scent. It doesn't like, oh, you know, I know what you're talking about. It doesn't like about. spray yeah. bug spray, but it's just you put a little pad in it and it has a little motor in it that runs a little tiny fan and it just produces the smell of basically of bug spray. It worked pretty well, honestly. I didn't think it would, but it 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 was pretty effective. Yeah, that doesn't sound like it would work well, honestly. So that's that's great. Going back to the bug zapper real quick, you know, since it's all about moths and lamps, I had to have someone explain that meme to me uh, because I am, (laughs) I remember we got our bug zapper and my dad, I was about four years old. My dad set it up outside of, um, of my bedroom window. And I think he was afraid that I would be scared of the bug zapper. It was like this ambient blue light. It was very soothing, actually. And yeah. he, <laughs> I don't know, I think I may have told you this, Katie, but he he said it was a wishing star. And Aww. yeah, every time a bug got zapped, if I heard that like zap, I don't think he told me it was bugs being zapped, but he said every time I heard the zap, I should make a wish. <laughs> he's the best dad. I know, he's great. <laughs> he's fantastic. He's fantastic. He's a great guy. So Anyway, join us next week on how to get rid of bugs. <laughs> We're going to review all kinds of, you know, bug repellents, killers, everything. No, I'm just kidding. We're not. I don't have time for that. I don't have time. And, and they like have to pay us. Fall here. They have to pay yeah. us. Like, I, I, I still <laughs> keep promoting Wine Cube, and I have not seen a dime from Target. <laughs> I know, we talk about Target in, like, every single episode, and I'm really disappointed that they haven't contacted us yet. What's up, Target? What's up, Target? I promo Wine Cube all the- Anyway, Wine Cube. I've got a red card. I'm a faithful Target customer. I know. I know, Katie. Katie and I really, <laughs> truly are. Um. Anyway, <laughs> moving on, like like I was trying to do before we ended up talking about, you know- Yeah, sorry. No, 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 no. Back to Avon. Back to Avon. <laughs> Avon, like, some of the reps really pride themselves on a no animal testing policy. Now, I believe that we've talked about in the group before about different cosmetic companies that they don't test on animals. Cruelty-free. Right. It's unique, right? That seems to be a real, like, oh, yeah, Yeah. we have vegan products, but where's your leaping bunny certification? Yeah, Yeah, exactly. But although it doesn't appear that they test on animals in the United States, they have a market in China. And... Mm-hmm. China requires testing before it goes out to mm-hmm. market. So there's that loophole where it's like, oh yeah, we don't test in the United States, but the company as a whole does test on animals. But that seems to really resonate with people that they want to choose. Like, I totally understand. I would prefer to buy things that aren't tested on animals. And I mean, there's plenty of brands out there that do have their Leaping Bunny badge and are actually cruelty free and are better products and cost less probably or at least are more cost efficient then i think that the 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 last thing why people consider avon oh you know i still love them is i like to call it hashtag not all avon ladies (laughs) yes not all mlms we have that a lot in the group too not as much as we used to but a lot of people will well, you know, not my MLM. Of course, not now because we don't let sellers in the group anymore for you right. know, the comfort of our group members um, and especially our ex sellers. But that is something that you see a lot is, you know, not my MLM. Well, my MLM, my company is not like that. Like, uh, are you sure though? Because. <laughs> so Katie found some really interesting stuff on why you should not join Avon. And. 
kind of off and off again relationship with the Direct Sellers Association, also known as the DSA, which we spoke about this in the HR 3409 episode, the last episode we were talking about at the beginning of this episode. Avon tries to shine up its image by claiming to be, and this is, we read this from pinktruth.com. Shout out to Pink Victim, hey! DSA tr- claims that they're basically this watchdog for pyramid schemes, but the DSA does not have your best interests at heart to protect you. Well, they have the interests of the companies that are members of their association at heart. Right now, the company stocks are plummeting and plummeting. Ironically, Katie, get this. This may be because of its housewife image, and it does make you think of your grandma and not something more hip like, say, essential oils. Like, essential oils are pretty hip for millennial moms. Yeah, yeah. They're they're pretty big right now. Yeah, because it does make everybody think of their grandma. It's not cool anymore. This was part of its the reason for its downfall in Australia. It's kind of hypothesized. Australia is a small market and it's got a lot of competition from more prominent makeup brands. Like people don't want Avon. It is really interesting because it, on one hand, like we were saying earlier, you know, it's really nostalgic. A lot of people will still really trust it, kind of like they still trust Mary Kay. But it's not super often that you see people in our age range using these products. Uh, I talked about this before, my best friend, she's a few years younger than me. She very, very briefly got involved in Mary Kay a couple of years ago. And I was kind of surprised because, I don't know, it was just, she didn't tell me, which <laughs> which in and of itself, I just got the invitation for her, like, um, <clears throat> you know, launch party. And I was like, you're selling Mary Kay now? <laughs> she was like, yeah. And I was just like, mm, okay, all right. I guess this is what we're doing. Yeah. <laughs> Here, Here's kind of the major difference between Mary Kay and Avon, though, because I still see, um, I, I, I have a sorority sister that sells Mary Kay right now. And I yeah. actually have two sorority sisters, maybe three, maybe three sorority sisters selling Mary Kay. And yeah, it does have that like classic appeal. But the difference between Mary Kay and Avon is Mary Kay has launched onto social media to make themselves yes. relevant to millennials, which is, I'm sure, their target market right now. Oh, yeah. I mean, our, the, the 18 to 24 age range, or I, I guess 18 to 30 age range, is always, always going to be the target market. Oh, I think it's, I think it's even are... 18 to 34. Yeah. Do you think so? Yeah, I think millennials, you know, if you're about 34... Yeah, 35. Oh, I didn't mean just, like, specifically millennials. No, 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 no. like, you know, ongoing. It's always that. It's always going to be that age range. And it's for different reasons. Because, you know, with the 18 to, you know, 22-year-olds is, you know, just got out of high school, college students, people like that, trying to, you know, make some extra cash. And then 23 to... 26 our age is is like a mix of that and um, a mix of college students and young moms and then anything beyond that up to like you're saying 30 34 is is gonna still be you know moms stay-at-home moms women who want to be able to make extra cash Things like that. I mean, it's always people that want to make extra cash, but... I was just saying, you know, 34, because I want to continue to be hip and relevant and targeted to. Um, <laughs> but, but yeah, this is, this is where, where Avon really kind of shot themselves in the foot, is that they've relied on their direct sales model for so long. They've relied on parties for so long that they haven't done... I mean, I hardly ever see Avon targeting on any of my Instagram yeah. sponsored posts. I don't see Avon on any of my Facebook sponsor posts. And ironically, I think Katie can probably say this too, because we're always researching MLM stuff, my sponsored ads are for MLM Cosmetics. And they they just- I I opened my internet browser the other day and there was a, there was like three, there weren't tabs and they weren't like full size ads, but it was the homepage for Google. So it had all my, you know, recent, most frequently visited links. And above those was three little boxes for buttery soft leggings. Oh, yeah. Lularoe leggings. 
and some other kind of leggings. And I was like, fuck you, Google. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think I think it happens to probably that. everybody, you know, everyone on our um, advisory board for the podcast. I think it just happens. Yeah, we're just <laughs> constantly Googling MLMs. So the internet's like, oh, you want MLM shit? I'll give you MLM shit. But I found it really interesting because I was going through my Spotify looking for inspiration for bumper music for this episode. And <laughs> they have a Avon account an avon profile can't be the same avon this has to be like maybe something in south america or something in the uk no it's avon there's an avon profile with playlists on spotify and (laughs) why are you choosing this social media platform over yeah everything else (laughs) also that's really oh katie 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 I also go Uh on youtube to look for fun bumper music for the episode Uh so i googled avon song katie Oh, yeah. They have this very cringy dance (laughs) that they're (laughs) lip syncing to. And there are several of them, like, I guess all these different downlines and their uplines and everything. Like, they get together every year and they put on, like, this dance with this song. Mm -hmm. I will link the best one in the show notes. That's Summer and I were just, we had our head in our hands, just like, God, (laughs) this is so cringy. Why would you do that? And that's talking about this before is actually what made me say this the first time is they did in the last year briefly started running ads on tv they had commercials that's for strange yeah i forgot you said that yeah 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 i didn't see them they're not on hulu where the millennial market is it- <laughs> no no and i uh, yeah that's i have that problem too where i didn't really see it until after several people had pointed it out in the group because usually i'm watching tv on hulu or netflix but i did happen to catch one one day and i was like it's so i don't know it's like almost bizarre because you never see mlms advertising on tv no you see them on social media all the time you see them elsewhere i once randomly got a flyer for monat in the mail yeah i don't even know anyone that sells it (laughs) it's that targeted information you know facebook selling your information out to people they're like (laughs) obviously she wants monat yeah yeah obviously well it's just it was just it's weird it's weird the way that they choose to market I'm not trying to derail us too much because this is, I use my antenna to watch antenna TV and me TV, you know, with all those old shows, some of them very good and some of them are the love boat. Let's be frank. Um, (laughs) um, (laughs) I've been watching I Love Lucy and the Twilight Zone a lot lately. Hell yeah. But primarily I watch, if I want to watch current shows, I watch them on Hulu. And I think the majority of people I know watch them on Hulu. I only know one person right now paying for cable. We all just go to Hulu. And they had a lot of eHarmony commercials for a while. They always have had a lot of eHarmony commercials for a while. But I remember one time I was watching with Greg. Pause, pause it right away. Pause it right now. And this girl was like, yeah, I found the love of my life on eHarmony.com. Oh, I remember Do you remember this? this? <laughs> yes. Decked out in unique shit. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that. Because <laughs> everybody oh, in the man. like, freaking out over it yeah 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 god okay so even even like this unique rep is like well if i'm gonna be in any harm any commercial like i'm gonna if you're gonna be on tv man you might as well make it worth it yeah i've been thinking about her recently if she's still with unique i've been thinking about her like i think about her every (laughs) now and again she had like unique sunglasses (laughs) and like a bracelet on and she was wearing a purple shirt like it was oh man okay (laughs) back to australia Back, Back to Australia. We're, we're, we're still in the section of why you shouldn't join Avon, and Australia is a really good example of this. Another reason it failed in Australia, well, this is what made the, the failure of Avon in Australia just so heart-wrenching. It was really, really heart-wrenching to watch this. I think, I think we remember talking a lot about it in the group. It happened a few months back. The reps found out on Facebook that the mm-hmm. Australian branch was dissolving. Avon did not send anybody anything, and there were some, you know, old school Avon ladies. I've been doing this for 30 years, and I had to find out about it through social media. It's, you know, what's really weird is I've been seeing that a lot with with even, you know, places that aren't MLMs, obviously not closing down, like, an entire country's branch, <laughs> because that's just, that's crazy, but... I don't know if if anybody if anybody listening has ever heard of the restaurant Ryan's. No, I haven't. It's a, like 
<laughs> it's a buffet restaurant and it's semi old. There's there had been one in my town for I don't even know how long they were there when I was a kid. I don't really like buffet restaurants. I just, you know, for personal reasons. So I hadn't been there in a long time. But several years back, they did basically the exact same thing where the employees showed up for work and there was just a note on the door saying, you know, we're closed permanently. Go home. Oh, God. Why Australia was a real horror tale, I think, for a lot of people, especially a lot of Avon reps. If it can happen... In Australia, it can happen in any other country, or Avon could just shut down for good. Done. Their stocks are plummeting. They're not bringing it. They're not marketing themselves correctly. And you could find out about it on Facebook. You're done. Done. And also, there's always the regular reasons why you shouldn't join a MLM. But for one, Avon is decades old in their multi-level marketing model. So there is no way you could ever reach the top of that pyramid. Ever, 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 ever. Yeah. Their cheap products are good for customers. They do seem to have very competitive prices for their makeup. But that's really bad for reps. If you're getting a cut of, you know, a cut of the pie, a slice of the pie, prices aren't really going to help you. Their their prices may be com- but is their quality competitive? Yeah. That's the real question. Because people will pay, I mean, you look at the popular makeup brands now, people will pay a lot of money for good makeup. This is another thing which I didn't check up on. So I don't know if, Katie, if you want to Google this real quick. Customers can bypass reps by simply heading to the company's website to order products or join the opportunity that you don't necessarily have to go through a rep. Well, I mean, there's there's other MLM companies that you can purchase online, but you you per- still purchase through a and rep. And that's what I thought with Avon. You could search the website for the rep who's closest to you locally and then go to their website and purchase through them. That's kind of what I've always seen the business model like. Yeah. Well, I'm trying it out right now. I'm on the Avon website right now. And I've added, I don't even know, a new power serum. That sounds interesting to my cart. And now I am checking out. So I have to, it wants me to sign in. It's giving me an account sign in or to check out as a guest. Okay, try checking out as a guest. See what happens. Um, now it wants a bunch of... Uh, it's not worth it. It's not <laughs> worth it. Yeah, I mean, it's... In my experience, any of the other MLM companies that I have gone to their website to see if you can purchase online, before you even go through the checkout process, you have to, you know, enter your rep's information or find a nearby rep or something like that, which it hasn't asked me to do. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, and also, like, as with a lot of MLMs, you're competing with 6.5 million other people to, you know, get ahead. That's never good. (laughs) And again, like with other MLMs, uh, Avon, from my understanding, is one of the cheapest MLMs to join. So that's really lucrative to a lot of people. However, you're still required to buy all your own promotional materials. I think you even have to buy catalogs. Is that correct, Katie? I've I've heard that. I don't know for sure um, because I didn't have anybody to ask, but I have heard. And just in general, like with, with everything else, you have to buy your own business cards. You have to buy your own flyers. You have to buy your own if you're going to go to a uh, to Costco <laughs> and sell your... <laughs> Sorry, thinking about Cutco Man from the last episode. Um, On my birthday, of all things, guys. My birthday. (laughs) Yeah, okay. So I just wanted to uh, interrupt for just a second. I went ahead and put the information in, and it's it's allowing me to place the order. Okay, there you go, guys. Why do you need to go? If if I can just go on the internet and buy my, my, my favorite nostalgic... Avon product, why would I go find a rep? Why would I go seek one out? Yeah, it seems like they're yeah, kind of fucking they don't their care own about reps, reps over on that. They don't care about the reps. And now, Katie, this is your time to shine. This is your time to shine, because you My did- to shine. Katie, Katie was like goddamn Barbara <laughs> Walters here. Katie did some, like, investigative <laughs> journalism. You know, ask the hard-hitting questions. Avon, and also Mary Kay is the same, <laughs> Avon will not release their income statements to anyone who is not already a rep. Yeah. Yeah. So I, and I did this same thing with Young Living um, about a year ago. I had other questions for them that I cared about more than this one, but I started with asking them for an income disclosure statement, which they 
you know, happily emailed to me. They had no problem with it at all. And then I asked the other questions that I had, and that was that. So I went to the Avon website, and they also have the quick chat feature. So I asked... I'm sorry, I'm trying to find... <laughs> I sent screenshots of it to our chat, and I'm trying to find them, but we send a lot yeah, of Yeah, yeah, and, and, and like, I just want to say, I'm a Libra. I'm not really into astrology, but I am a Libra. And uh, as, as a Libra, I'm not very confrontational. Like, if someone's going to tell me, like, you know, no, we can't give that to you, I'm going to be like, okay, and walk away with my tail between my legs. <laughs> like Eeyore. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, it's a lot easier to be confrontational. We all know it's a lot easier to be confrontational over the internet when it's, you know, just no no face to a name, just, just it's just a name. It's, you know, just some random person. It's a lot easier to request answers. So they said, you know, hi, thanks for contacting us. How can I help you? I said that I was wondering if they could provide me with a current Avon income disclosure statement because we found a couple of old ones floating around, but we really wanted a more current one because I think that the newest we could find was like 2015. And (laughs) this honestly kind of made me laugh because her immediate response was, I'm very sorry, are you an Avon representative? And the only thing I could think to say was not currently. (laughs) (laughs) because it was like you know maybe i used to be one maybe i'm thinking of being one maybe you know you never know so not currently that was my answer she said i apologize we do not have that option for customers if you were a representative during 2018 please contact the avon care center and then it was it was like maybe a minute or two before i responded again and she said, I haven't heard from you for a while. Are you still there? Okay. <laughs> and I said, why does why does Avon not make that information available? Yeah. You know, just curious. That information is only for representatives that sell Avon. We do not have the option for customers. Which isn't really an answer, because you already told me that. I said, so if someone is wanting to become a representative, they wouldn't be able to see that until afterward? She said, yes, that is correct. The information will be available once you become an Avon representative. Which to me is like... Why would you not tell somebody how much they would be making before they choose to work for any you? Any job. Any. Any time. Yes! Any time you start working a new job, you know what your pay is going to be, or what it's going to average, at least, before you start working there. So, yeah. So I said, so why does Avon not want people to know what kind of income the people in their company make? And she said, I'll be right with you. Yeah. <laughs> Did she ever get back to you? <laughs> She did. A couple of minutes later, she said the same thing. I'm very sorry. We do not have that information available for customers. If you would like to know, you can call, you know, the Avon, whatever it was. uh, The care center. Yeah, the Avon care center. Which, which, you know, she didn't say if you want that information. All she said was, you know, I recommend that you call the Avon care center. Which, you know, honestly, I didn't because it was like, they're not going to give it to me either. I know they're not. <laughs> no, they they wouldn't. Otherwise, other people on the internet, like I looked at a couple different websites, a, a few different websites, wh- where they mm-hmm. list the income disclosures for different MLMs, and no one had Avon. Absolutely nobody. And if they're not going to yeah. get down to it. And I just want to say, again, talking about mortuary, my mortuary experience, being a funeral director, we used to call our embalming center because we kind of centralized all our embalming in one funeral home and we called it our care center. So when Avon is like, <laughs> yeah, come to our care, you know, call our care center. It's just like, <laughs> <"Ew."> <laughs> like no, <laughs> no, thanks. Hard pass. <laughs> no, thanks. So I wanted to end that section. And as a wrap up for everything, before we get into closing statements, like, closing statements what are we a lawyer i just i just wanted i think that that's one of the most important parts of this episode to take away from and katie could have been a, a potential rep like that's kind of yeah like what that's you were yeah that's really what got me because it was it was like you know what if i'm considering joining and whether or not i join is hinges on seeing the income disclosure but they absolutely did not want to send it to me they absolutely do not want people to see it. Bad news bears, guys. That's Bad news not bears. a good sign. <laughs> <laughs> Even Young Living gave you some kind of... Yeah, they were... They were As soon as I asked, she was like, Oh, sure, what's your email address? I'll send it to you. Katie and I will be right back with our final thoughts. I 
want your beauty product? I want your beauty gel. Welcome back. As I think I've said in previous episodes, Katie and I like to use that bumper time where you're grooving for us to go to the bathroom, for me to get a drink of water. And during that time, I have my beautiful cat Draper, Don Draper, real name Dick Whitman. <laughs> Two Mad Men references in the same episode. That's cool. Um, <laughs> he's chilling in my lap right now. So if you hear a meow, you know, that's him. Not going to edit it out. He's part of the podcast team as well. Katie, do you have anything that you want to stick a button in? <sighs> Honestly, I don't think so. You know, I I feel like I've said everything that I can say. <laughs> I don't really have anything to say because I just feel like Australia speaks for itself. The income disclosure speaks for itself. And use real bug spray or get a bug zapper. Yeah. It's much more effective. You know those yellow jacket traps that you hang? Mm-hmm put a piece of raw bacon in it. I remember when my dad's brother was visiting, my uncle Stephen, he, uh, <laughs> my dad said that he would pay him a dollar. These men no. were in their 50s. No. He would pay him a I... dollar for every yellow jacket he ate. So Ew. they counted them out. Dad ca- dad gave me like 10 bucks as a kid to eat a spider one time. So it was <laughs> What is wrong but with your dad? <laughs> my dad, my dad, you know, he's a he's he's a cool guy. He's a cool guy. He just likes to see people eat gross things, I guess. No, he does. So so <laughs> so Steven and my dad Skeeter. Name is Skeeter. Well, that's not his uh his legal name, but Skeeter. Um <laughs> so Skeeter and Steven uh counted out the bugs <laughs> and my dad's I think it was like 12. 12 Ew. and i don't know this was in the 90s this was like 1998 so you know maybe 12 dollars went a lot further back then uh steven just put them all in his hand and swallowed them stingers and all that's so gross he's my dad <laughs> this is the man who raised me um which anyway we don't have to keep going into like you know fear factor stuff anymore they're so good anyway all right, <laughs> wrapping this up now. No, no, no more of these shenanigans. No more of this chit chat. Uh, you can find all of our social media presences on our website, slmlm, but okay.com. That's just okay. No AY at the end. Uh, that'll have our link to our Facebook group. That'll have the link to our survivors group. That will have the link to uh, our Twitter account and our Instagram. And me and Katie's personal Twitter accounts, which uh, I did a very, very long um, uh, 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 tweet storm on uh, Wario, on a character analysis of Wario, and nobody gave two shits. <laughs> I will, I'll still do Waluigi. I'll still do that's, Waluigi. That's, that's Twitter for you. No, yeah. I. Also, I want to say, yeah. don't forget, if you enjoy our podcast... Don't forget to please give us a rating. Please go like our Facebook page. Please share with your friends. We're pretty active on social media, so well, especially if you Katie tweet at us or comment yeah. on our on our posts, we'll talk back to you. Usually we're nice. Usually I'm nice. <laughs> if you're a dick, we're gonna be a dick back because Katie and I will we have a little powwow when um if you're being a dick to us, we will write something really fun and snarky <laughs> back to you. Um, uh, also we've got merchandise. Um, I've got the boomers, boomer mugs up. If you know, you want, you want to, uh, appreciate our mascot. They're very 1980s vaporwave kind of vibe. They're in several different colors. Uh, I am still going to get the t-shirts and sweatshirts up because they're really tight. Uh, we also have a, oh, and then we've got like normal podcast merchandise along with it. Uh, we also have, um, our Patreon, and we've got really cool rewards for the Patreon, so, you know, come come support us, because Katie and I, uh, we spend a lot of money on this podcast, uh, uh, not that we're complaining, but, oh, no, 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 we're not complaining, but if you want us to continue to, like, up the ante with, yes, right now, we have the best sound quality that we've ever had, just so that we can give you a better product, and we can devote as much of our time to this, we're better with your support. Always read the fine print, don't get scammed, and we will see you next week. There's a woman who lives in my town. She's a idol of all the girls. She's got a shape like a movie star, and her teeth are just as bright as pearls.
You know she sail from door to door And watch you buy you want some more Avon Garland She's back again with a satchel in her hand. Avon. 